Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. I hope you are enjoying your time grinding through Saber Wars 2, but there is only about a week left in the event. So, because of that, I figured it may well be a good time to look at the next event that's coming up in January. And that's going to be today's video, so let's go. Um, I'm, I think everything in YouTube is currently broken, so I don't know if doing anything helps me or not. But just know, hey, if you're watching, I appreciate it. It's <laughs> a good time for YouTube to break down and do everything bad. But either way, regardless, let's go into it. Little Big Tengu is the name of the event. And here it is. So yeah, the only thing you really need to do is to clear Fuyuki at this time. We don't know when it actually starts. This says January 20th, 20th, but that was the Japanese time. I expect it sometime, if this was after, what, two day uh, act or two days? No, because this is the NA time. So maybe two days after. Uh, I don't know. It's weird. Uh, but yeah, that's the event. Uh, it has a quest schedule. It has a welfare in it, and then it's also a mission-based quest. So if you're not a big fan of mission-based events, let me tell you, we're getting two of them back-to-back -back in the new year. Enjoy it while you got it. Um, and yeah, and different quests will open up, so you can kind of take your time early on in the beginning and get it done as quickly as possible. Not as quickly as possible, but get do what you can for the day and then just kind of move on, which is probably the best way to do mission-style events. It's better than doing that than doing it all at once, I'd say. The welfare is SR Kichi Hogan. She has a Times 2 campaign, and then there is also a summoning campaign related to it. So let's say first take a look at the welfare. Uh, actually, there's also some other stuff I forgot. Uh, there's event mechanics. Again, I avoid a lot of the JP things. I just know there's a lot of little tiny dudes and they're going to probably show support in some way. But I usually avoid what the actual event's on so I can play it myself and just kind of enjoy it. Uh, the craft essences are Stitching Your Beloved One, a fantastic Ryko CE, uh, a very rare Ryko CE in that it is not... This is uh, uh, showing off the motherly side of Raiko as opposed to the other side of Raiko that she has. Next, the event and command codes. Heavenly Child of Kurama increases the engraved uh, card's crit damage by 20%. The Tengu's Hachua attacking with the engraved command code removes enemy uh, enemies damage up one buff. Increase the engraved card's critical damage by 10%. And then Mini Ushiwaku. Ushiwaka, there we go. Attacking with the engraved card, command card gives one crit star plus cleanse one attack buff for yourself. So there you go. Those are the command codes. This is the free CE. And then we can go on to here to the summoning campaign. These are the specific summon banners. It's weird because there's raid up servants. I wonder if they're going to change this banner because they're probably, I don't know, it'd probably be better just to make two banners so that the reason is, is that when this banner originally came out on JP, uh, they didn't have pity, so you could do a banner like this. There was no pity, who cares? But now that we have pity, it might be better to kind of separate them. So Ushiwakamaru is by herself, and then we have oh, another banner that is Maeve and uh, Ku Colin over here, Alter by themselves. Uh, it sounds like a pretty good idea to me to kind of separate them, but let's see how it goes. Otherwise, the schedule is going to really suck if you're going for Ushiwakamaru. Oh my god. I will double check on this. Um when the actual banner info comes out for us and i'll update it if there's anything changing here but just know that i do think that this is probably going to change um event craft essences one inch princess fantastic name for a c quick performance up by 10 percent buster card performance up by 10 percent mp overcharge two plus two stage one time Zen Miniature Garden, Quick Arts Performance up 8%, Art Card Performance up 8%, MP Gain up 8%, and Taking a Seat, Damage Cut minus 100 and Crit Damage plus 5%. They're all CEs. Uh, none of them really kind of speak out to me. It's unfortunate, but for the most part, I really just kind of care about the ones that give like at least 50% NP, or they're giving something so crazy that it's hard to deny. Like, eh. Do I really care to have 8%, 8%, and 8% in MP gain and two specific card arts? Not really, but to each their own on that part. Alright, so let's take a look at the free servant first, the event servant, the Kichi Hogan. She has two quicks, one arts, two buster. First skill is the Eternally Peerless Blade, E+, increases own quick performance for three turns, grants self-evasion for two attacks, she's also an assassin, increases self-evasion for two attacks, three turns. 
Uh, level 1, it's 20% to quick, and at level 10, it's 30%, and a cooldown is 6. Second skill, Unmediodo La A. Charges 1 ally's MP gauge, increases their crit star absorption rate for 1 turn, a 10% and a 20%, absorption up 100% and 200% at level 10, 5 turn cooldown. Third skill, 6 Secret Arts of War EX, increases p entire party's attack for 3 turns, increases party's MP generation rate for 3 turns, 10% at level 1, 20% at level 10, 10% at level 1, 20% at level 10 for both of them, and a cooldown of 5. Passive skills are Presence Concealment C, Magic Resistance EX, and Territory Creation B+. Her pen skill for the third one is a bonus against Archers, she's anti-Archer. Her Noble Phantasm is the, oh god, Six Secret Teachings and the Three Strategies, Noble Demon King's Great Feather Fan, or as it's called here in Japanese, uh, Rikuto Sanryakyo Mao Sunday Usen. Completely butchered that. Quick is her Noble Phantasm type, rank A, 7 hits, per hit percentage, I never talk about this, but there's the per hit percentage, <laughs> I don't know why I brought it up, deals damage to all enemies, removes our defensive buffs first, which is very good, because this is what removes the Castoria anti-purge defense. Um, again, if you want to get rid of, remove invincibility does not remove anti-purge defense, but it Remove their defensive buffs does remove it. It's really silly like that. NP damage at level 1 is 600% and since she is a free to play welfare you'll get it to 1000 at level 5. And then she also increases her quick performance for one turn. At charge level 1 it's 10% up quick and if you somehow get it all the way to level 5 at 500% charge it is 30% bonus to quick. This unit is fantastic. Really good. Uh, basically a free-to-play quick welfare uh, farmer. A lot of the problems, which I've said, that she's actually very similar to Ushiwakamaru, but the, the Assassin Summer version, but I think she ends up being a better version. The reason is, is that Ushi suffers from the problem that she, one, doesn't do enough damage, and that, two, she doesn't have any, any NP generation rate, so she can very, very, ever if ever actually loop with her stuff and that's a summer unit i have her at, at least np2 i have her all 10 level skills i'm speaking from the heart when i say that the summer version of ushi is the saddest unit i've ever had to deal with because it's so hard to actually get her to loop it's such a pain in the butt uh she needs mp generation to actually get it going and she just doesn't have that uh, thankfully here, Hogan does have that, she has NP generation, and then if you do fall off just a little bit, she also has the ability to increase NP gauge by 20%, usually it's enough for 3 turns. And also, her Noble Phantasm is fantastic, hitting 7 times with a quick NP is great, because the more hits the better in that uh, instance. The ability to remove defensive buffs is nice, and the slight increase to quick is also pretty good, because it uh, increases just how much more damage you're going to be doing, and because she's a free NP5, the 1,000 damage that she is doing is going to be fantastic for that, even with a base damage of only 0.8% uh, as in terms of the modifier. So, in simple words, fantastic free-to-play unit. Absolutely worth getting. Um, fun to use, at least, it looks like to me. She's the perfect uh, free-to-play that you can ask for, because one, they're very good, and two, they are also really nice to look at. Look at that. Fantastic. Who doesn't love this wonderful Tengu Master here? It's great stuff. Um, it's funny how they did the basically back-to-back -back quick welfare units so well, because Summer... Uh, not Summer Gana. Um, Santa Karna is also a fantastic quick welfare unit, so it's kind of nice to be able to get them. Uh, and Lord knows that quick definitely needs it for where we are at at the moment. So, not to say that they are... In dire straits, they're still perfectly fine, but you know, not comparable to the current other meta, which is Arts. Well, to be fair, I guess over in our side, it is Arts, Quick, and then Buster, because Buster's the hardest to kind of deal with because you only really have Merlin and a couple other squishy side units that you can use. But that changes the second Tamamo Vich comes out and the other unit that I'm avoiding saying it just in case someone out there is still trying to not get hit by spoilers. 
But either way, those two definitely increase what Buster can do, and it ends up leaving Quick in the dust, but hopefully eventually we'll get more Quick stuff. But anyway, Fantastic Unit worth uh, doing all the free-to-play grind for. That's all you need to say. Let's move on to the others. I'll very quickly go over these three. Uh, Ushiwakumaru is a three-star writer. I really like Ushiwakumaru. Don't let me... Ushi is a fantastic unit. I think she has some neat stuff in what she does with her second skill and her first skill. Uh, she's a solid single target at rank C. Uh, solid for a three-star writer. Um, I remember in the beginning she probably had a little bit of trouble, but she's, I think she's perfectly serviceable as she is now. <coughs> so if you're a big Ushi fan, you're already going to be summoning for this banner because there's another Ushi on it. So... Ah, uh, now let's talk about Kukalan Alter. At one point, this guy was the cream of the crop. He was the greatest. He was the one who was able to do all the solo. I think you can still probably do solo stuff with it, but I feel like because of the way that the game has changed, you just don't see that much about him. He's basically like a berserker version of the three-star coup that we got. Um, I <laughs> Reduces all enemies' attack for three turns, reduces their critical attack chance for three turns. Yeah, that's... Uh, not the greatest skill for someone who is known for. It's a very weird Berserker, because you can see he's a Buster Gorilla. Um, his second skill is Protection from Arrow C, which is a weaker version of what uh, Ku can do, the Lancer version. Still very good. And third skill is the ability to apply Guts. Zero of these skills buff him. So all his damage is really just coming from him. Madness Enhancement EX, C, increases his own Buster performance by 6%. And then Divinity C. And then his third skill is Anti-Lancer, which is funny. A plus, uh, 12 hits, Buster times 1.5, removes one enemy's defensive buffs, activates first. NP level 1 is 800%, and then it's 1200% 1, at uh, level 5. Increases his own attack for one turn, increases his own defense for one turn, 30%, 30%. Yeah, it's a weird unit. He's very old. I feel like they should buff his first skill at the very least and maybe give him a little bit more to play with. But he's kind of like an old-style berserker from when the game was a little bit more about, like... Like, honestly, his kit was perfect back in the day and with Merlin absolutely devastating. And I think you could probably still do solo quest with him, honestly. It's just not something that really gets brought up because he kind of gets outshined by a lot of other units. Like... Comparing him to a lot of other 5-star, more recent 5-star Berserkers, this skill is a little bit, like, borderline laughable. And then his two passive skills. But he also doesn't get very featured very often, and he is story-locked, so if you are a fan of him, uh, this is your best chance of probably trying to get him. And speaking of story-locked, we have Queen Maeve. Uh, the writer version, yes. Here she is. She has multiple costumes. She has a prison outfit. She has her idol outfit. She has everything that you would want. She's a single target writer. Her first skill, I think her, oh yeah, all three of her skills have been buffed. A very solid single target writer. Third skill is a <laughs> increase against Lancers, which is also funny. Her rank B plus is Chariot My Love, five hits, and it's anti-male, I believe. Deals extra damage to males, at least 150%. Yeah, so if you're a male caster, she's going to completely dominate you, which is what she would want to do. Another one that I think is actually pretty solid, I remember a lot of people not liking her back in the day in terms of her skill, but I feel like they buffed her so much that she's a solid choice for a single target rider, especially with anti-male on her. Um, you'll find plenty of male enemies <laughs> in the game, so plenty of chances for you to ride them off into the sunset with her, so there you go. And I think she's also story locked, so she's also a big pain in the ass to actually get, so this is your best chance of getting her. And yeah, they constantly update her, as you can see here. Nasu's favorite, that's why she has like two different costume spirits. She's, uh, at least that's what I always hear, that he absolutely loves her, which is why she has so much story written around her and everything else. So there you go. Here we go. And finally, here's the actual new unit. Taira no Kagikyo, aka... Yoshitsune, aka uh, Ushi. Yoshitsune is the name that Ushi eventually gets or something like that. I forget the actual lore because it was related to a Japanese person in history. But yeah, Yoshits Yoshitsune is the name that Ushiwakumaru is more famous for having. Uh, this is her kit. Two quicks, two arts, one buster. 
first skill, uh, Genji, except your demise, A++. Increases his own damage against the Genji enemies for three turns. Increases his own crit damage for three turns. Charges his own NP gauge. Reduces party crit star absorption by 100%, except for self for three turns. Bonus against the Genjis. At level 1, it's 100%. At level 10, it's 200%. Crit damage is 50%, and then at level 10, it's 100%. NP is 20% and 30% at the end. Her second skill uh, is the normal one. Don't look at the NPC one. That's not what she has. Kakikyo never dies EX. Grants self gut status for one time three turns. Revives with 3,000 HP. Stackable with other guts, which is the best kind of guts that you could ask for. Um... My, no, the best style of Guts is the one that never goes away and is stackable, which I think only really Kama has at the moment. I think one other person has a Guts status like that, but it's a very rare one to have. It's the best form of it. Um, increases own instant kill resistance for three turns. Grants self an on Guts activated buff for three turns. When Guts is activated, grants self um, Thirst for Vengeance a buff for ten turns. Thirst for Vengeance enables extra damage from Tyro no Kakyo's NP. Insta death resistance is 50% at level 1 and 100% at level 10. Third skill, Mist of Azumaru B. Grants self evasion for 2 attacks, 3 turns. Increase on attack for 3 turns. Inflict curse by 500 damage for 3 turns to all enemies. 20% attack at level 1 and 30% at level 10. Passive skills are Avenger EX, uh, Oblivion Correction C, and Self Replenishment Magic D. Her append skill for the third one is an anti-rider. Again, another very funny choice. And her noble phantasm is all things must pass to flourish to fail, or if it's known in Japanese, <clears throat> Shogiyamoji Joshua, Joshua, Joshua Hisui, completely butchered once again. Uh, B plus ranked noble phantasm with quick anti-unit secret technique, ten hits, fantastic. Renews one enemy's buff, activates first, uh, deals damage to them, deals 100% plus 25 and extra damage to them, and equals own thirst for vengeance stack count, max is 4. Uh, so potential to do, I think, what is it, 200% more damage, I think? Mm, noble Phantasm level. 1 damage is 1,200%, at level 5 it's 2,000, and inflicts curse for 5 turns to them as well. 1,000 damage in curse and 5,000 damage if you get it all the way to the final charge level. And that is Avenger Ushi, or she's better known as uh, Yoshitsune. So, how do I end up feeling about her? Uh, I actually really like her. I, it's a shame that I feel like I don't... How, well, let me first see how many Genji enemies are in the game. I'm trying to think of how many people have Genji in them. Uh, it's a decent amount. It's basically the ones you would expect. Let me look at traits. Maybe there's one for traits if I can go to the G's. Genji? This is the enemy traits. Oh god. Okay, let's go to the G's. Just to see if there isn't any. G, giant, fey, Greek, human. Okay, so you're really only doing it to these specific units, which are featured fairly enough as like challenge stuff, I guess. You do have. Golden show up in a, bu a bunch of stuff. You do have Raiko show up in a decent amount of stuff, like the fucking Shimosa battle. Um, but okay, just assume it's probably not. It's gonna be very rare for you to actually take full advantage of it. But it is something kind of cool to have. Uh, yeah, I end up thinking she seems pretty good to me. She has an on death thing where it seems like you really want her to activate this gust so you can deal more damage. Maybe you should kind of only see it as kind of like a bonus if you actually get it done. Um, there's no real other way to give her guts unless you're actively giving her guts with units that give guts. Mm, no way for you to actually give it to her as well. But eh, I end up feeling she ends up being perfectly fine. She's a very unique type of unit. Uh, 10 hits on quick is very nice. Uh, even though, as I mentioned beforehand, she doesn't really have anything that gives NP gain, but since it's a soul target uh, unit and she's going to be dealing a lot of damage, I can only assume that you would be doing enough damage to enter overcharge, and then at that point you can kind of start farming out the over. Um, you can farm. It's a little bit different when it's a single target unit. When it's AOE, uh, you definitely want to have them uh, have NP gain, but for solo targets, 
units, I very rarely, when they have this many hits, run into the issue of them not doing, not being able to get their NP again. Like, uh, Kama is one of them, for example, Kama. I've never had the issue of not getting her back to 100% when she's a single target unit. So I feel kind of the same way here. So yeah, she seems fun. I actually probably will end up... Mm, I need to figure it out. I need to grind out some stuff and see if I'm going to summon just a little bit. Maybe at least three summons would be good enough for where I'm at right now. I really am a big fan of Ushi, so it would be kind of nice to have the Avenger version of her just to have... But that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. Obviously, if this is a unit that doesn't really super interest in you, then obviously you can keep on saving. But we're on in the early parts of the year, and there isn't really much coming up. I I did have to I did get to skip Space Ishtar, so I'm kind of good on that. Uh, I think I'm gonna end up skipping Valentine's Day because I feel like she's gonna show up in a GSSR that. Uh, at a certain point, you shouldn't. If you want to take the most value out of GSSR, you really shouldn't summon that much and actually pull every unit. Because then, at that point, your uh, pool of new dudes in GSSR becomes much less. But that's the plan I have going in. I also feel like there's a high chance I'll also fail for Ushi. But still, worth it to try, I think. But yeah, that's uh, that's the end of the video. Tell me how you guys end up feeling. Are you excited for the event? Are you ready to go get your new free-to-play unit? Are you ready to go potentially summon for an adult Ushi? How you feeling? Let me know. I'll see you guys in the next video, and happy grinding to you as you continue on through Saber Wars. I have to grind myself. I am I know I specifically said you really shouldn't save it to the last bit, but I'm just so... Un I've been playing a lot of Kakarot, so that explains that. <laughs> been very busy it's very hard to play a long ass game and then also dedicate your time to Fago it sometimes but anyway that's the end of the video everyone until next time i'll see you guys in the next one goodbye peace out